All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Orion Drive mod, which is being made by form user Teak Dreaming, and is actually a continuation of the work originally done by user Nyrath way back in the day. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is the Orion Drive, which is a theoretical propulsion system that uses nuclear bombs as as a means of propulsion and how freaking Kerbal is that flying through space on the shockwaves of nuclear bombs. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at how all we get this to work. And uh, some of you may be thinking that this sounds fairly familiar and that's because we've actually taken a look at another mod in the past that also had the Orion Drive and so I'm quite intrigued to see how the two differ today. And uh, I gotta say, this one is quite unique and very cool in how it functions. So basically, how you get the Orion Drive to work with this mod is you need three separate parts working together to make you fly. And that is, first and foremost, a magazine full of of atom bombs. And this is where your thrust comes from. The different size bombs will determine uh, how fast you're gonna go, basically. You then need a launcher, which corresponds to the specific kiloton rating of each bomb, that then will actually take the bomb and load it into the actual engine, which will then shoot the bomb out behind it, explode the bomb, and then you ride the shockwave to the stars. And that is awesome. Though it does present us with an interesting issue, because of course, when we normally have engines, we can, uh, you know, hit right click and get the lovely information panel about how many kilonewtons of thrust, etc., this thing produces. That doesn't work, though, because the thrust ratings are all determined like I said, by the size of the bomb. And uh, if we start right here, we start at 0.9 kilotons, which is going to produce 419 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum. And we go all the way up to 15 kilonewtons, which is going to produce <laughs> 190,734 kilonewtons of thrust. Do not use the 15 kiloton to launch from the launch pad. You will explode. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> so, basically, as for the different sizes in between 0.9 and 15, though, we start, of course, with the 0.9. We then go to 1 kiloton, 1.4 kilotons, 1.9 kilotons, 5 kilotons, and then finally 15 kilotons. And you'll notice on these, we actually have a lovely little uh, graduating color chart between them all, which is very useful because like I said, the loader has to correspond with the right bomb kilotonnage. So if you need a 0.9 kiloton magazine of bombs, you're gonna need the 0.9 kiloton rated loader. And those will have the same color on here to make it a bit easier for you to see, which is a very cool addition. I really do enjoy that bit of the texturing on these particular fuel tanks slash atomic bomb magazines. Oh, that's terrifying to think about. All right, so as for the loader loaders, you'll notice we actually have a fair few, and that's because besides having a separate loader for each kiloton rating, we also have two different sizes. We have the 10 meter size, and then we have a um, 80 foot size, which is really big. Really, really big. Now, as for the 10 meter one, as you can see right here, very, very well made, very beautiful design. I'm actually gonna, uh, let's pop it up at the top, actually, so we can see it a little bit better, because we do have this fun thing right here. So I guess the bomb gets loaded into there and then shot through or something along those lines. But very, very cool, and as you can see, we have that same, uh, you know, bright green color that we have right down here. And uh, very, very nicely made, beautiful texturing, beautiful modeling on it. Ooh, wrong way, I meant to go the other. And uh, yeah, very, very large. In fact, far larger than any other 
their stock part, which is a little weird because you would have it say down here on your rocket, which means a very hard cut to the next stage. But there are actually some structural pieces we'll get to in a little bit that make that a little bit less awkward, which is quite nice. Now, again, like I said, we have a different loader for each kiloton rating. So we go from the 0.9 kilotons to the 15. And then we have the other size, which is 80 feet or well, actually specifically, I think 86 feet, maybe something along those lines. What I'm saying is it's really big. In fact, this big. Oh God, I got to zoom out more. Yeah, that's really, really gigantic. And it's gorgeous. <laughs> Again, a very cool looking uh, modeling on it. Very cool modeling, texturing, etc. Not quite as interesting, I think, as the smaller one. But you know what? It's gigantic, so it's compensating, I guess? Question mark? <laughs> and again, we have the same color coding right here for the 0.9 kilotons on down to the 15. And the same ratings there. So very cool, very fun, and freaking gigantic. Alright, let's actually pop this one in here though for now <laughs> and go to engines where we have two different sizes which correspond to the same size of the loaders so we have uh, this one which is the smaller 10 meter engine which is personally my favorite as it's a bit more controllable and uh yeah it's just a giant freaking shock absorber basically the nuke gets shot through there through that hole where it then explodes way back here and this pad just kind of like a shock absorber goes into the craft propelling you through space very very fun very awesome looking part and very cool when actually in use now as for the other one that's the oh boy 86 foot one Oh, uh, geez. Okay, there we go. Now, as you can see, it actually, its attachment point's right here, but it goes much further up, which can be interesting with how you build things, because it actually, in fact, if we do go back to a launcher real quick, that D, there we are there, and then pop this thing there, you can see it actually goes past the whatever these pylons are for in the loader, which is kind of awkward. I have a bit of a problem with that. In fact, it's really my one big problem that I have with this particular mod, that these just seem very, very strange to me with how it goes. But it still kind of looks cool. I like all the supports everywhere, and it's just a gigantic version of the uh, smaller nuclear pulse engine. And it's just gorgeous. Really, you want to use this thing with the 15 kiloton, you know, just to get the full use out of it, in my opinion. But fun times, fun times indeed. Now, if we go down to structural, that's where the next parts are. And we've got a couple of things in here. The first one is a very nice payload interface. So this is for the 80 foot section. And as you can see on here, oh boy, I need to get it up top. There we go. As you can see, we have a variety of attachment points on the top of this thing. So you could put the loader in between this and the engine so that you can cover up those taller pylons. But the real use of this, besides all the attachment points up here, is that it's also completely hollow on the inside. So you can put all sorts of things on the inside bit of this. You know, fun science experiments, even friggin' command pods and capsules. It's so large. So it could be quite cool useful. Now, I prefer the smaller one, though. I like the 10 meter size. And what's fun about the 10 meter size is that we have these different payload interfaces that come in three different sizes. We either have the small, the medium, or the large. And it's just a very cool framework with a lot of attachment points. And what's even more useful is each of these interior, or uh, not the interior, but the exterior sections, like right here, right here, etc. They fit the magazines in them perfectly. So inside these bits fit any 2.5 meter size part very nicely. So if we just go back to grab one of those real quick and pop it there, Excellent. As you can see, it holds it in nicely, and you can go all the way around and keep stacking it up for however many magazines or other types of fuel you may need. And of course, you can get it in, as I said, the three different sizes. Now, the next thing we have is in payload, and this is a giant protective shell for the 80 foot so that you can make a gigantic 80 freaking foot fairing. 
There we are, beautiful. It's been done. <laughs> and of course, this too does have the uh, weird interior hollow section, so you can place all sorts of experiments, etc., on the inside of this bit. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice part. Very, very large arrow shell. And I believe that is actually all of the parts for this mod. So there we go. Let's actually take a look at how this all functions. So let's grab my first crappy little bomb launcher that I built here, which just to show you the three essentials that you need. Well, four really, a command pod, a actual magazine full of nukes, the loader, and then the engine. Do I have Kerbals? No, I forgot to grab some Kerbals earlier. Da -da 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 -da. There we go, perfect. And pilot, scientist, what the hell, another pilot. There we go, and we'll go to launch the bomb launcher. Now this is with the weakest of the nukes, the 0.9 kilotons, and this thing technically could very easily get into space. It won't because one of the problems with using this propulsion system in atmosphere is you really have no control. This has no vectoring or anything like that, so you're going to need to add some sort of aerofoils on this thing, some flaps, etc., to control it, because otherwise, well, you're going to have what's about to happen to us. So if we even try to turn on SAS, and I don't know why I'm throttling, it's going to launch the same amount of nukes, and fire! We now fly by explosive and there we go. We drop little nuclear bombs and we then fly through space Isn't it gorgeous now if we do throttle it will adjust the Speed at which it does drop the nukes. There we go. It's actually trying to fly. I'll be darned so if we go for actually I guess a uh, Short or a longer interval between nukes. Maybe that would work better But yeah, either way we ain't getting into space. This thing has zero control but it's just so fun. You can see the nuke being shot out there, the explosion and the shockwave, etc. And yes, it's gorgeous. Exploding 0.9 kiloton nuclear weapons for us to fly. <laughs> there we go. Now throttle up for the quicker release of bombs. And there we are, flying at quite a good speed. And it's beautiful. Now that's pretty much all we need to show for this one though, so let's just go to the tracking station and yes, leave anyways, I don't care, because up in orbit, I have Bomb Orbital, which, oh boy, has the most powerful of the uh, nukes on board with 15 kilotons, and I also opened or uh, installed the fairing. Let's actually, hold on a moment, so we have more light. Let's make sure that we are in a good light, so let's move ourselves over here. Perfect. Oh god, now it's gonna need to move, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's kinda facing towards the planet. Well, no, actually, no, we're good, we're good. We're still facing towards space, which is what I need. So let's uh, open up or deploy our protective shell. There we go, lovely. Gigantic 80-foot protective shell. God, the thing is just ginormous, but beautiful. To, uh, you know, show our glorious ship that we have. Now, I'm using one of those fun, uh, oh, I'm now forgetting the name of them, but the structural, in, the structural uh, organizer thing, as you can see here, so that we do have all of our nuclear magazines in the different areas nicely tucked away and safe from any harm. We then have the rest of our ship built out on top of that, and I have a load of science juniors on all of the attachment points on the inside, but of course, on those attachment points, you could build anything. You could build quite the large, massive ship here. I just went with something simple though because well <laughs> uh, we're about to blow some things up okay so let us fire a 15 kilo actually let's well yeah let's just fire there we go launching explosion oh boy <laughs> and let's go to the map if I can actually hit M there we go Oh, geez, already just a couple of nukes we fired and we're already leaving our solar system. Look at that, every nuke we fire, the apoapsis changes by just a huge amount. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, I do love this thing. And this is at 15 kilotons, the most powerful. So this thing can fly very far and go basically anywhere you need with just the firing of a couple of nukes out the back end. 
and it's gorgeous. Oh, I really do love this thing. I mean, come on, again, how can you not love this? It is the most Kerbal of means of propulsion, explosions. And yeah, that's really all I have to show you guys for this. The 15 kilonewton has crazy amounts of power that can get you anywhere you need to go with just a couple of explosions, but it can be a little bit hard to control exactly because it's not like a normal engine of course just gently feeding you thrust you're getting a huge gigantic jolt of thrust every time one of these things explodes uh but yeah it can be difficult to use but overall it is a very very cool means of propulsion and uh yeah if you would like to check it out for yourself which i would definitely suggest you go and do you can take a look at the link in the description as usual but uh, that is going to be it for today folks i hope you all have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one now we're at full throttle and look at all those g's every time it explodes oh it's gorgeous later folks